What's up guys, Omni here. You guys know how it goes, another day, another video. Last night I tweeted I sleep. What recent news, topics, tweets, videos y'all want me to talk about tomorrow? Hey you guys, today is March 20th. Sorry for no video on Monday. I think I'm going to drop an update video for you guys tomorrow. I got a lot of weird things going on in the background, some updates when it comes to my health, okay? Don't be worried, don't be scared, okay? But expect a video dropping of your subscription feeds tomorrow, okay? Do not be alarmed, alerted, okay? <laughs> the goal actually is for me to drop more videos for you guys in between the Monday, Wednesday, Friday, big chungy wongy segment so just again don't be alarmed but we do got to talk tomorrow okay we'll talk starting with this one okay a lot of you guys have probably heard about this news already it's the whole situation that's happened with nickelodeon and it's an absolute huge mess in case you guys don't know first i'll just read this the texas dragon scale has said nickelodeon's official documentary just came out exposing officially dan schneider and i assume brian peck john k and chris savino too on their main channel of all places even if it shatters their reputation in the process almost correct it wasn't actually on Nickelodeon's main channel. Here's what you basically need to know. And I have to be very careful with how I give you guys this news, okay? Because the details of this case would be something that if I talk about certain things or certain heinous things that have went down, this video will get suppressed or demonetized or taken off YouTube, okay? So there's a lot of sensitive information here. I'll be dancing around the subject so that I can give you guys the information without the information getting basically closed down. This guy right here, he's Drake Bell, okay? He was a part of the Quiet On Set series talking about his experiences on Nickelodeon back in the early 2000s. At the point in time, the producer was a guy by the name of Dan Schneider, who has been called out for basically allowing this environment to happen with a lot of allegations being levied against him, like a foot fetish and him forcing people to massage his neck on set. In this situation, Drake Rell is talking about his experience with another guy by the name of Brian Peck, which he exposed in this video that he was the child that was basically being assaulted by him several times back in the early days. What had happened was, is Brian Peck actually had a case that happened to him a long time ago, and there was an unknown child that was in this case. He ended up getting charged for sexual assault. This was like in 2003 and nobody knew who the child was and now we now know it's Drake Bell and Drake Bell is talking about his experiences and he's also talking about how all these other childhood experiences happened as well, exposing the deep, dark secrets that is Hollywood and Nickelodeon. Amongst the revelations that we find out when it comes to Drake Bell is that there was like 30 or 40 plus people when this case happened who came to the aid of Brian Peck, knowing exactly exactly what he did and there were celebrities people that you probably know who was in defense of Brian Peck to say, hey, he's a swell wind up guy. You know, he would never do this. My heart and condolences go to Brian Peck. Meanwhile, Drake is the unknown kid in this situation who has been sexually assaulted multiple times by this guy. As the series was released, people started going back and looking at all the other childhood characters, one of them being Amanda Bynes. Amanda Bynes had her own uh, show and she was one of the prodigies when it came to Nickelodeon. But as she grew up, she went through trying and hard times and people didn't understand what was going on. And people have now started doing investigations into her past, finding her old Twitter account, which they found some very disturbing news. Again, stuff that I can't tell you out loud, but you need to know like the worst things that you can do to a 13 year old happened to Amanda Bynes. Literally only a few days after this documentary dropped, Schneider dropped an interview with this guy named Boogie. Apparently he was one of the people from iCarly. I don't know a lot of the people from the Nickelodeon days. I was too busy watching Cartoon Network, but AKA the better cartoon show. But yeah, he dropped a response. It's a 20 minute video. I'm not going to go into the details and the weeds of this because I'm I'm not going to sit here and listen to this guy talk. I have already watched the majority of the video and seen some of these summaries as well. So I'm just going to let you guys know what you need to know from that. But even before I talk about that, we have to probably establish the elephant in the room. This is freaking weird. Why is somebody who is being called out in a documentary just several days later coming out with an interview to explain his side, like quite literally in the midst of this Nickelodeon documentary? It's not even finished. And he's already playing defense, trying to do damage control, and then also, he's being interviewed by one of the, the people from the Nickelodeon show. Like, why isn't this a third person part? He's already got people within the Nickelodeon force that people are saying is like, yeah, they were all kind of sus being... This is very confusing. This is not normal. I don't know why the events are being played out this way, but that's what we have. Anyway, looking for a TLDR for you guys. I'm not even going to play bits of the pieces of the video, but this right here was actually the best one that I could find. And what you said, so I watched this whole thing and so you don't have to. And I will say that this is basically is damage control. And also a lot of things were not fully spoken about, notably the fetish content, the fetish content relating to the fact there are several videos. If you just go on Twitter that I cannot show you again, a lot of the content I can't show you where you have Ariana Grande grabbing a potato. She's a child by the way and pretending that it's a penis and then eventually moving into different scenes and putting water on her face there's another kid that's out there that's over there having a foot fetish they, they've recorded these kids 
doing extremely sexual things. It's kind of wild that that was the past that we live in. You know when they say like back in the old day kind of thing, how things were kind of just normalized? The fact that kids were being sexualized nonstop and we had people like R. Kelly doing things out here in broad daylight kind of just shows just how deep and dark Hollywood went, okay? It was like one of those things where people just saw it but just didn't say nothing. And now like 20 years later, people are coming into the future and be like, whoa, that's not okay. Which brings up the question is this what happened? What happened with Nickelodeon? What's been happening with Hollywood? What's happening behind closed doors? Why are we hearing about it anymore? Is it still happening or did they just get better at silencing it? Anyway, he had continued and said, I don't think they're able to speak on Ariana unless she approves of such because that does spark controversy and is another scandal, henceforth why she hasn't spoken up. What I did get from this though is that there are some misconceptions about how much power he actually has when approving scripts. There is in fact writer's room in which he was in, but there are plenty of other writers in said rooms as well and the scripts have to be approved of someone higher up before being recorded, etc. Meaning that Dan is, isn't the only problem here. Watching the documentary though, you can see what was intentional and what was intentional on his part, but a lot of this is very unsettling. So we really shouldn't only hold him accountable, but the writers and whomever is higher up and approved as well. And then as for Amanda Bynes, what we just talked about, until she comes out to speak out for her part on of it, most we have to go on is the fan side of the story, just basically his side and what he said. And he did actually do the right thing to get her to the police after she ran away. If you guys don't know Amanda Bynes was trying to get away from her parents. She was a victim of one, being one of those childhood like uh, actors who basically get used and abused by their parents and they just take away all their money because when you're young and you're a kid, you can't actually get access to that estate early, early on. So there's that. Also, a lot of people are asking why he isn't in jail. The victims would have to start the process and then the investigation would go on, so on and so forth, which is why he isn't in jail or has a lawsuit. He did admit to doing a lot of the things he was accused of, which is enough evidence, but what's confusing me again is he's saying it wasn't intentional and everything was approved. In conclusion, the execs and the writers that were also involved should be held accountable and not just Dan. Meanwhile, you have Josh who has actually responded to the situation on TikTok with this absurd clip that you're about to listen to right now. And if you don't know who Josh is, he did the show with Drake. It was called Drake and Josh. If I haven't talked to you since 2023, take that as a sign that you don't exist to me anymore. Damn, you bug. You got sprayed with the raid. Bye. See you in that bar. The hell, fat? What the hell was that, bro? Anyway, that's the situation in a nutshell without me touching on too much in details. Everyone hates Josh Peck right now because he has been a supporter of Dan Schneider for a very long time. And now people are looking into the documents that showed all of the people who basically tried to silence Drake and also showed support when it came to Brian Peck during that, that case that happened a long time ago. There's a lot of celebrities that are on the name that people are like, wow, you actually came out here and protected him and not the kid? And then he went on to continue doing work. I believe his next project was the Sweet life of Zach and Cody. So he was <laughs> completely fine after all of that. How do you get charged for something like that and then just get out ahead? People are trying to figure out what exactly happened, what happened with Drake Bell. There's more episodes coming out. There's going to be more developing this story. We might hear something from Ariana Grande or something from Amanda Bynes, but it's a dark, cruel world out there, homies, and I'll let you guys know how this plays down. Guys, before we get further into today's topics, I'm happy to announce that today's video is sponsored by Dbrand. Dbrand is a company that excels in making heavily customized accessories for electronic devices. Phones, laptops, gaming systems, controllers, AirPods, if you can think it, they definitely have it. I don't know if I've ever told you guys this, but did you know that I'm Spider-Man? No, no, not Venom, I'm I'm Spider-Man. Yeah, guys, it's me, Spider-Man, okay? Don't tell anybody my secret identity. No, but seriously, <laughs> don't tell anybody. But what you can tell people is D-Brand's newest case collection, Carnage. No, not Venom, Carnage! If you like the Arachno plates that were available for the PlayStation 5, well, now they're available for over 130 devices. I got one for my phone that looks incredibly sexy, and one for my Steam Deck that also looks incredibly sexy. If you guys are a fan of Spider-Man, aka a fan of me, because I'm Spider-Man, then you guys have to grab at least one of these cases, if not more. They're all limited edition for a limited time only, so you guys have to act fast. So yeah, guys, what are you waiting for? You guys can head over to dbrand.com slash omni now and grab a few of the Carnage cases before it's too late. And again, special thanks to Dbrand for sponsoring today's video. But guys, I got a little bit of sad news right here. Some FGC news. Okay, this is the passing of a legend. Rest in peace, Paper Poke had said. It said to the fans of Broly Legs and the people whose lives he's touched and inspired, please take the time to share your moments and memories of this amazing person. The family wishes to continue to share his story with the world and celebrate from now till forever the amazing man. If you guys do not know, the FGC, the fighting game community, there is a member in there by the name of Broly Legs, but unfortunately he has passed 
at I think the young age of just 35. It was very sudden. They said that on behalf of the family, Michael Phillips Begum, we want to inform friends and fans around the world that he's passed. The sudden loss is devastating to us all. The family needs time to gain more information on his passing and time to grieve through the unbearable pain and loss. He survives through his loving mother, Josephina, and siblings, Jonathan and Karen Begum. I met Bali Legs several times during my <laughs> tenure in the FGC, and I actually had the honor and the chance of fighting him in Street Fighter 4. I don't know if it was at an Evo. It was a random tournament but if you guys don't know brawly legs is one of the goats of goats when it comes to fighting games because he will beat you without even using his hands he was disabled and he would always have to sit on a chair and i don't think he was able to quite use his hands well or his feet well however this man played with his mouth and his nose and his cheeks and then he would actually beat people he beat me and i'm not garbage okay don't be like hey um you lost no <laughs> This guy was a freaking living legend, taking out strong names by beating people with everything just above his neck. He would sometimes use the, his hand to kind of keep things situated, but this guy is... It, it makes no sense. If you ever want to make an excuse in life on something that you cannot do, I just this is the guy. This is the legend, the gang gang himself. This man was able to do things that I cannot believe people could do. And he pushed and persevered. He's the quite definition of like no excuses, play like a champion. So yeah, I just want to pay special homage. Also share the story that I have with him, specifically him beating my ass. I, I remember coming into the match and be like, all right, this should be pretty interesting. I, I, I guess I wasn't going to hold back. I don't care if you're disabled. I don't care if you're a kid i don't care if you're a grandma right you want to get these hands and the fgc you don't hold back no matter what all right you you get these freaking hands equal freaking opportunity and i was coming in there with blood i was like look i'm not getting knocked out it was i think it was a pools or something at one of the evos this man used chun li on me and just bops me with footsies <laughs> no pun intended this man just had fundamentals that was just way beyond my understanding i tried to bully him with, with rufus and i just could not get in this man had really good spacing and i just was like how how is he doing this without his entire body he was just the go and it's really sad to see him go so just want to pay some homage and say rest in peace to the homie and to the go and i we will fgc will remember this guy he will be immortalized forever as just one one of the best to ever do it. The crash said, I'm guessing George's second response video, which basically tells the situation was blown way out of proportion and should be in private and people get mad at Katie falsified text. Not quite. Okay. <laughs> it's happening. This whole thing is happening again, which I said would happen in the beginning, where it's going to be ebbs and flows and someone's going to release documentation and they're going to, you know, pitch for it. And someone's going to release documentation and pitch for it. In case you guys don't know what happened here, George not found Minecraft YouTuber was basically getting canceled for essay allegations there was a person who came out and talked about her experiences with george not found and how he basically as aid her at a party at vidcon and went into this entire stream and then he responded in twitch being like i'm sorry taking accountability for the situation and people being like wow that's garbage response that you made and then she came out with a follow-up statement giving more receipts and more paragraphs and more clarifications but then this started creating some confusion because people were looking at her story and be like hey this doesn't match what you said so now you're saying this but now you're saying this there are inconsistencies there are inaccuracies people are looking into her friend group and their friend group is saying different things as well and now people are like wait a minute now this is getting all muddied and jumbled okay blah 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 and then he came out with his own response as well in which he's also pointing out inconsistencies which then lead me to just one freaking final point for some reason during this entire shebang bang between katie and george not found is that neither of them are being very specific about the actual touch what occurred that's all that i care about there's so much fluff about maybe underage drinking she wasn't she was 18 but apparently she might have been proposing as 21 about her friends about the, the dream you know being there and making it about himself i honestly don't care about any of that did he touch her inappropriately or not she's claiming that he touched her under her shirt which sounds like he's applying that he's touching the breast that's what it sounds like and he's also confirming that he did but they're also saying it was at the waistline people are saying it's tickles i don't know what kind of touch it was even after all of this they're still being very vague with what that concept is top of that you have the setting that they're both drunk you have the setting that they're both cuddling with each other you have the setting there's there's so much that's happening out of context it's getting to the point where it sounds like moral of the story this should have been something where they just talked about and had more open communication but once the information got put out onto the internet then it got put out to the minecraft stands and you have the minecraft stands out here with the pitchforks ready to kill anybody specifically george not found and then when he responds the pitchforks turn around and it responds the pi it's <laughs> 
<laughs> it's a constant back and forth of just pitchforks because it feels like once the fan base gets a hold of this information, they run the narrative and the people like Katie and George not found, even if they have validations, they're terrified of what these people, the fans are going to do to them based on their response. George not found's video. I watched it. It's a 27 minute video. We're not going to watch the whole thing. He talks about a lot of the context between Katie's stories, but he never actually says like, you're wrong or this didn't happen. Or you, he, he never actually just kind of puts his foot down. It's always him about to come into something and then be like, but I'm sorry I made you feel this way. It, this one doesn't make sense, but also I shouldn't have did this. You know, I'm sorry I felt this way. So he was kind of teetering on the line of, I think that there are inconsistencies in your story, but also I might be responsible for some things as well. It's a very confusing back and forth. But the TLDR of the results of everything that's been going on is that George Not Found's entire like career has kind of just been evaporating recently. He got removed off a picture or a photo with Mr. Beast when he was hanging out with them at Feastables. He got removed from the VidCon lineup. People are distancing themselves from George and unfriending him and sharing stories about his their uncomfortable experiences with George Not Found. And we're now in a situation where people are like, hey, did she over-exaggerate? Did it actually happen? Did she come out here for cancellation for fame? Or did he actually do some things? And it's still in the gray area, I feel like. But And I think everyone can agree that a lot of this could have been avoided with just communication. I've, I talked about it in the past couple of videos, how we're in this dystopian future where everyone just keeps coming up to, to talk about things and make twit longers where you can just have a conversation and call that person and get things kind of cleared up. <laughs> but instead, everyone's just creating content out of their situation. There was no need for, for Dream to come out on Twitter and start crying on a Twitter space about how he cares about people, yada, yada. There was no need for that. There was no need for, there's no need for a lot of this stuff in this space, but it seems to be very normalized and it's absolutely weird. So yeah, I'll let you guys know if there's any more updates. What'll probably happen is now people are like, Team George not found. And then Katie's gonna come out with some more videos or some more evidence. They'd be like, oh, here's what actually happened. And here's some more stuff. And it's just... <laughs> It's going to be the same song and dance. When we get to the verdict, I will let you guys know what the verdict is. For me, the only thing that I really care about is like, did you did you grab her boobs or not? That's it. I, I know it sounds kind of crude, but like if you didn't, then I don't really care. Okay. If this was like a waist thing and they were snuggling, he went for a waist or, or a tickle or whatever. I'm like, all right, that's not essay. But if you did, then yeah, then you, you should not have done that. And I wish one of them would be make it very clear what specifically happened in that action. Because I think that action is the only thing that really matters. Pause. I would like to enter my own segment on here to check in on you guys. Okay. I, I want to talk about something because there's a lot of stories that you guys have been wanting to cover to, for me to touch out that, that seems to be circling around the same freaking topic. There's like these YouTubers that you guys are asking me to come out where they've been exposed for talking to underage people. And it just keeps happening over and over and over. And not even just in the YouTube space. We're talking about it when it comes to Nickelodeon. For some reason, every single story seems to have some kind of common denominator where somebody is out here talking to people. They should... <laughs> They should not talk about and I want to make sure that you guys have a nice palette refresher because I don't want to turn this entire channel or series into just basically outing freaking groomers and, and P files. I, I don't want to do that to you guys. It matters and it's sad that that's the world that we kind of live in that we're getting these announcements on the daily in terms of people being exposed and thankfully we have people like Matt Pat but like I don't want to poison you guys with all of this bad information. There are a couple of cases you guys asked me to talk about specifically that are still ongoing that we're waiting for responses and I'm going to wait. OK, I'm, until the stories have finished and both sides have gave their stories and the facts have come out and the truth has come out for certain stories. I'm just going to wait just so I don't overflow you with like breaking news. Person talks to child. Breaking news. Person caught talking to child. Breaking news. <laughs> Bro, there's only just so much time that I can kind of handle that information. My, my goal for you guys, right, is to deliver the information that's happening on the road, both good and bad. That's why I like to do palate cleansers now and talk to you guys about the good things that's happening around the world or what's happening within. Okay, I want to keep you guys safe. I want you guys to know what's happening and let you know these streets aren't safe. But also, I want to let you guys know it's not all doom and gloom. Even though I have that theory in my head that it kind of is, I feel like this year is absolutely wild. If this channel does not serve its purpose as to being able to give information for you guys in a non-toxic way, then there's no point in me making this content. I made this tweet say, is it just me or is the world getting crazier, bro? And I just feel like I want you guys to be careful. I think that there are forces at play right now where your mental health is just being attacked. I don't care if it's TikTok. I don't care if it's social media. I don't care if it's just your phone. There's there's something happening right now. And if you feel kind of alone or depressed or feel stressed or feel like things are getting worse, you're not wrong. You should listen to your gut instinct, okay? And just make sure that you kind of put some of your energy into places that's going to kind of help remedy that. I'm going to try to create that safe space for you guys where... <laughs> 
<laughs> you can kind of run away from that. But there's another place that I want to take you to as well, and that's Stardew Valley. That's right, guys. I am here to spread the gospel and the good word of the probably one of the most best games I have played when it comes to therapy. Remember when the pandemic happened and Animal Crossing, everyone was playing that, like everyone was stuck indoors, trying not to go crazy and everyone was playing Animal Crossing. They're like, oh man, I'm stressed out about this huge worldwide pandemic, but Animal Crossing, everyone playing that's giving me a little bit of comfort. That's what Stardew Valley is, but all of the time. And they just dropped a new 1.6 update, Concerned Ape. He's working on a, another game called The Haunted Chocolatier, but until now, we now have more Stardew Stardew Valley. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, do not skip what I'm saying here, okay? I am literally giving you the keys to freaking therapy. <laughs> Do you have a therapist that's talking to you for you about your feelings and stuff? Well, this right here is like 10 times better and 10 times cheaper as well. I, I When I say that this game is one of those escapism games, okay, I'm trying to get you guys on game and on lock. If you've never heard of it or you have heard it or you haven't played it, this is something that you need to try. If you kind of want to just take a step back, the premise of this entire Stardew Valley game is like there's a guy who's working a nine to five and he's going freaking crazy being in, in the rat race in the cubicle. His grandpa basically says, hey, when Whenever things get kind of crazy, come over here to this farm. I got you a farm. And he goes to the farm and he starts working with his hands and he starts growing his own food. And he starts meeting up with these new villages and meets up with new people. And it's a place. It's just an escapism game. When I say you got to play it, I'm saying that you have to play it. This is not just a request. This is an order. Okay. If you have not played it, play it, come back to me. And if you enjoyed it and you love it, you can thank me. And then also you can pay me $499 because that's how much it costs for my therapy sessions, AKA me getting you on game on one of the best games out there. It's out there for the Switch, it's out there for the Steam Deck. It might be on all the platforms actually as well. So this is just me spreading good word, giving you a palate cleanser and trying to protect your mental health because I want you guys to be mentally good going forward and at all times, so yeah. And yeah, that's it, that's all I have for today's video for you guys. There's more things I wanted to talk to you about, but I I gotta end this video short because I got some things that's going on in the background that I need to take care of. I'm sorry. It's the reason why I didn't make a video on Monday and I'll probably do an update video for you guys on Thursday and then I'll have a news video for you on Friday, but I'm just trying to make sure that my health stays on game, okay? Don't be too worried, but I, you know, daddy, I'm gonna keep you guys updated. I love y'all. Thanks for hanging out with me. Stay safe on the streets because you know them streets ain't safe, man. And I'll talk to you guys very soon. I, I plan on releasing more videos for you guys in the future. So tomorrow's video is gonna be a perfectly valid excuse to make it, but you're going to get some more one-offs from me as well because I just kind of want to talk now. I'm at a point in phase now in my YouTube career that I just want to talk to you as much as possible. I don't care what it's about. I don't care if it's about what I'm thinking, what you're thinking, some news that doesn't matter. I just want to get up here and have this conversation because I feel like just showing up to you guys every day, that's therapy for me and hopefully that's therapeutic for you. So I love you guys. Y'all take it easy. Be easy and I'll catch you tomorrow. All right. All right. Peace.